up guys welcome back to another cog podcast how are you guys doing this week or midweek or however week how are you guys doing this month of february the so-called month of love when every day and every month should be the month of love where we give love to others and you know when we recognize that we are loved and that we're always loved consistently not just on valentine but every day and so getting into that today we're going to actually see perseverance within love and it's gonna be pretty cool because we're starting right back off where we left off in our last journey through the bible which is through genesis starting off at genesis 29 and basically we're going to be going in depth with jacob but specifically you know jacob's life so let's start this podcast off with a prayer dear heavenly father i pray that you allow us to recognize that our love for you should be limitless as your love for us is ever growing ever expanding and consistently always there with us to comfort us to keep us safe and to make us feel like your children we pray that your word enters into our hearts and spirits and we take the lessons in that you want us to learn amen okay guys i just want to preface this if i was jacob i would be a completely i would have a completely like different reaction than he had but you know let's just go into this and guys comment down below after you're done or like after the podcast if you feel like you would have had a completely different reaction um than jacob which is completely understandable because obviously they lived at different times but if this happened like today would you have like a completely different reaction um from what happened so Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of eastern people. There he saw a well in the open country with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. And Jacob asked the shepherds, my brothers, where are you from? We're from Haran, they replied. He said to them, do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they answered. Then Jacob asked them, is he well? Yes, he is, they said, and here comes his daughter, Rachel, with the sheep. Now, period. Rachel already entering the scene, entering the story, and, you know, instant love. And so, and so he said, look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to the pasture. We can't, they replied, until all the flocks are gathered and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well, then we will water the sheep. While he was talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. Now, I just want to preface this information with, I feel like Rachel was one of the only, like, female shepherds. I could be wrong, because we're all learning together with the Bible. But as I've read through, I've never, like, really noticed another woman as a shepherd. And so, I guess, like, I, what I'm trying to say is, like, good quality. She's, you know, hardworking. Um, she takes care of her flock and she knows what she's doing she knows what she's talking about and so when Jacob saw Rachel daughter of his uncle Laban and Laban's sheep she went over he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep now you know if you just ladies if you're just walking through you know doing your boss stuff and then you know you have this you know God fearing guy just walk up to you you know and he just helps you open up the well to water you know your 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 business or quote unquote water your potential or help you continuously grow within god green flag and so then (laughs) then jace then jacob kissed rachel and began to weep out loud now if he kisses you and he's like this is the one this is the person i've been waiting for my entire life you've won sister you've won because jacob as a god-fearing man knew that rachel was for him and the thing was like we all know the scripture like those who find a good wife finds a good thing and I feel like regardless of a guy like finding his wife, God also gives him a good wife. Like God 
makes it so that that good wife, you know, happens to stumble, you know, a, like by him. Because we've seen it with Rebecca. Rebecca just happened to be walking to the well, quote unquote, happened. And now we see Rachel also walking towards the well. And so, you know, it's, I don't know if it's like a, a thing, like there is something behind that walking to the well, we'll figure it out. But both of them were found by the well. And so it makes you wonder like, is like a wife meant to just be like meant to be like found or it, do you feel like you find her but low key you know she also kind of found you or god well you found her but god like pushed her in the right spot so for example if you ladies are feeling like you know um you don't you don't know when a man is going to find you don't worry about that don't worry about that you gotta go outside and stumble upon God's guy for you and then he'll he'll get you straight he'll let the guy quote-unquote find you when technically God orchestrated the whole thing that you stumble and be right in the, the good oh I moved the mic but be right in his like spot you gotta be right in his spot so you find him so when you go to church for example you'll be there and you'll just be like hmm just walking around being beautiful being great being god the god bearing woman that you are and then bam this guy spots you you don't know that he spotted you but he spots you and then after he spots you he's like oh i think i found my wife but then God just allowed you to stumble into the space where the guy can find you. Does that make sense? Is it all clicking? I feel like that's where it's clicked. It's clicked for me now. And so then he told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and the son of Rebecca. So she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home where Jacob and there Jacob told him all these things. Then Laban said to him, you are my own flesh and blood. Now, do I find this a little creepy that Jacob is technically marrying his cousin? Yes, it was a different time back then. It's not going to be me now. But Jacob, he gets a little swindled. Okay, guys, he gets a little swindled and so after jacob had stayed with him for a whole month laban said to him just because you're a relative of mine should you work for me for nothing tell me what your wages should be now laban had two daughters the name of the older was leah and the name of the younger was rachel leah had weak eyes and rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful jacob was in love with rachel and said i'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter rachel now p.s i know this seems very transactional but of course in this day and age it's not a transactional thing i feel like jacob really was saying that he wanted to work for the right to have such a great woman such as rachel and so Laban said it's better that i give her to you than to some other man stay here with me so jacob served seven years to get rachel but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her now isn't that sweet he waited seven years and it seemed like literally days simply because of his love for her. And I find that absolutely remarkable. And so it makes you really wonder if they're not willing to wait for you. Is it really love? But I digress. And so he served his seven years happily. I'm just, just happy to even be in her presence while working. <laughs> and then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to make love to her. So just a quick touch like down on like celibacy and waiting for the one that you love. If he was really sent by God, he's willing to wait for you. And that can that it meant it it costs a lot for him quote unquote but if he's not like gaining self-control if he doesn't know how to work for the right to be your husband 
then I don't know what to say. But also the fact is that I feel like it's not even just working for the right to be your husband, but he should appreciate the fact that you want to uh, remain pure until you're his wife to fully reclaim that love that you guys have so that it wouldn't just be based on physicality but it will be based on the fact that you love this person so much to hold off on what is claimed to be in society the most important thing in a relationship when really and truly just growing in god is all you need and everything else will come later and so when the oh, so Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob made love to her. And Laban gave his servant Zilpah to his daughter as her attendant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have, have you done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Now, first and foremost, I know we're all thinking it. Maybe Jacob deserved this due to the fact that he went and tricked Isaac into giving the blessing. Maybe this can be seen as a punishment. Whatever it is, I feel like it's so weird that Jacob did not realize that it wasn't Leah. I mean, that it wasn't Rachel. He know what Rachel sound like. He know uh, what Rachel looked like. I mean, regardless of it being dark, you should be able to know the one you love. Hmm. But anyway. So Laban replied, it's not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. Now, two wives, red flag. But regardless, Jacob said, you know what, fine. He finished the week with Leah, and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. And then Laban gave his servant Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her attendant. And Jacob made love to Rachel also, and his love for Rachel was greater than his love for Leah. And he worked for Laban another seven years. That is so much perseverance. The fact that you waited seven years just to get the woman that you want. And now you have to wait a whole, you have to work a whole 14 years just to escape the grasp of your uh, father-in-law. And plus that deal and oath was just to actually have the one that you truly loved and so it's really hard to say like okay this is like love we're saying love but is your love worth waiting 14 years working hard 14 years just to have the one that you desire and being patient despite being tricked because jacob could have easily been like you know what whatever leah you're my wife that's it that's done I'm not working those the next seven years. I don't know time for that. I just need to go. I need to dip. I got my wife. She can give me some kids and that's it. But no, Jacob decided and said, you know what? Whatever. I love Rachel so much that I don't even care about the tricks right now. I just want Rachel. And so he was willing to do whatever he could or whatever he had to do. However many years he had to wait just to be with her. And so Leah became pregnant. Oh wait, when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Now, what I want to say is Leah is an innocent bystander in this mess, okay? And God recognized that. And that's one thing that I realized in the Bible, like despite, you know, people being treated poorly, for example, like Hagar, God recognized Hagar and blessed her. And now Leah, Leah was not loved. She was in a relationship and a marriage that she was not loved. And God was like, you know what? In those times that it was a disgrace not to be able to have kids. And he said, Rachel will not have kids. And Leah will have kids simply because Leah was not loved. And so Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And she gave birth to Reuben. She gave birth to Simon. She gave birth to Levi. She gave birth to Judah. And when Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, give me children or I'll die. And so obviously, if your wife, the one that you actually love, threatens to die, you're willing to do anything and everything to please her. And so Jacob became angry with her and said, am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Then she said, here is Bilhah, my servant, sleep with her so that she can bear children for me and I too can build a family through her. So she gave him her servant and Jacob slept with her and she became pregnant and bore him a son. And then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son because of this, she named him Dan. 
And so her serving cats having kids, which was next, next was Naftali. And then Leah realized that this is the secret. And so she had her servant and Jacob do stuff. And they had Gad as well as um, just kids, just a lot of kids. And so during wheat harvest, Reuben went out into the fields as the firstborn by Leah and found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother, Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son mandrakes. And she said to her, wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you take my son's mandrakes too? Ooh, spicy. Very well, Rachel said. He can sleep with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. Now, I don't know how valuable mandrakes are, but I am not giving my husband to anybody for a plant, okay? And that's not period. But I mean, I guess he's both with her husband, so really, ugh. So then, Jacob came in from the fields that evening. Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me, she said. She said, you have to. I have hired you, hired you with my son's mind, Jake. So, so he slept with her that night. Jacob just, at this point, Jacob just is be like, uh, Leah, Zilpa, Bahala, Rachel, turn back around to Leah. And I'm just like, my guy, do you, like, just like, at that point, I'm just like, are you leading your family or are you being led by these women and their desires to have kids? Which obviously all of this is in the plan of God, but still, it's very weird. It's the same way like I thought about like Abraham immediately being like, okay, well yeah, I'll go and have sex with Hagar to uh, give you a child. Instead of being fully patient for God to work, like God promised Sarah. And so, yeah. But then it reminds me, like I just zoop, come back to it and I'm just like, well, like I said, Jacob is imperfect. And you know, maybe if... I couldn't have any kids. Of course, I would go and find any and not any, but <laughs> a good, like some another form of a way that I can get kids. Maybe adopt, maybe a surrogacy, so on and so forth. But obviously, I would do anything to make sure that my family is happy. So I get where he's coming from, but I just felt like it would be more led by him, but not like him stepping out wasn't. I mean, it, it was his choice, but. It was fueled by his wife's need to not be a disgrace to the family. And so sometime later, she gave birth to her daughter and named her Dina. And she also had a son named Zebulun. And then God remembered Rachel. And that's not period because God never forgets. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph. And said may the lord add to me another son and you know the thing is with time god produces one of not one of the greatest results and so like yeah leah had like seven kids plus servants had like four kids but at the end of the day who made the most impact in those kids joseph joseph may have been he was the most loved but that's because he came from rachel who was the most loved and who god remembered and who god consistently reminds us to like just wait in my timing because when i act it's gonna be something that you're like you yourself can't comprehend and so jacob then you know he rachel gave birth to joseph and jacob said you know what yeah i'm tired it's tired i'm tired of this living under my father-in-law's roof Laban send me on my way so I can go back to my my own homeland give me my wives and children for whom I have served you and I will be on my way you know how much work I've done for you and he said yeah give me my coins I'm, I've had enough let me leave but Laban said to him if I have found favor in your eyes please stay I have learned by um, divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you now see I will say this, that's what I learned about Laban is that people will stick around by you because you they know that you have the anointing and the blessing of God. And just because of that does not mean that you should stay. And I've had a harsh realization with this because you like just consistently give, 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 give. But at the end of the day, just because I am blessed doesn't mean that you can use me. You need to, and I, and I think that's, I think we should love those people, but also love them from afar. 
And so when Jacob separated himself from Laban, I don't think he was like, no, you know, I don't like you anymore because you're trying to suck up blessings from me. No, he was just like, I think you need to, I think they need to build a relationship with God for their own. Like just because you see that I have the blessing and anointing of God, then you should aim or you should try to be just as close to God as I am so that you can get the same blessing and anointing that God has on me. And so Jacob said to him, you know, I have worked for you and how your livestock has spurred under my care. The little you had before I came has increased greatly. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now when may I do something for my own household? And he said, what shall I give you? There's nothing that anybody can give you that will amount to something that God can. And so regardless of what Laban offered Jacob, Jacob can leave and God will multiply his nothing into everything. And so he said, let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb and every spotted or speckled goat, they will be my wages. Now, obviously Jacob had a plan, but Jacob, and I feel like this is great negotiation, said, you know what, let me take all the quote unquote um, imperfect. And I feel like these flock represent us. God wants us like the imperfect flock. And he wants to multiply us and make us greater than we were before. Um, because at the end of the day, perfect or imperfect, we're all his kids. And none of us are perfect. So we're all his kids. And so Jacob said, I, My honesty will testify for me in the future. Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me, any goat in my possession that is not speckled or spotted or any lamb that is not dark colored will be considered stolen. And so Laban said agreed. Now he obviously thought that, you know, this was gonna be like a small amounts, small amounts, but Jacob had a whole other plan. Jacob took fresh cuts of branches from poplar and almond and plain trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner woods of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all of the watering troughs so that they could be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in heat and came to drink, they made it in front of the branches and they bore young that were streaked or speckled spotted. And Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest face the streaked and dark colored animals that belonged to Laban. Thus he made separate flocks for himself and did not put them with Laban's animals. Period. When the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches and troughs in front of the animals so they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Now, honestly, this was Jacob doing a business venture and he was multiplying assets and stocks that seemed invaluable and he made them valuable. That was me applying a little real life stuff out there. But he basically maximized his investment by consistently watching over his flocks, despite them being perceived as speckled or dotted, polka dotted. He was like, yeah, I'll make this work. I'll use the stronger animals and keep creating stronger breeds. And that's, that's just very smart, but that smarts and strength doesn't just come from him, it comes from God when God blessed him with that intellect. And so Jacob flees from Laban. Now see, when you can't get away, when they won't let you go, you gotta leave. Let me hear you say it, you gotta leave. And so Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all his wealth from what belonged to our father. So obviously it's become, it's be it became a toxic environment from simply like it recognizing that your blessings are coming from Jacob simply be, like your blessings are coming from Jacob's blessings but now it's coming to a point where it's Jacob I'm envious of Jacob this is the same situation with Abimelech the king when Isaac was prospering too much in his kingdom and he kicked Isaac out obviously like we said last episode kick me out I don't have any ill will against you because I know that God has already set before me prosperity and blessings. So kick me out. And so like the saying goes, when one door closes, there is a window. No, when one door closes, there is a chosen door for you that God has given you. And that regardless of anybody behind or on the side of that door, only God keeps it open for you and he closes it after you because it's specifically designed for you. And so... 
he said to his family, he said, I see that your father's attitude towards me is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. And like Jacob said, regardless, his attitude could change. He could worship me, whatever. It don't matter because God is going to be with me. I will leave today and it don't matter because God is still with me. And he said, however, God has not allowed him to harm me. So let's, let's kick it up. God has not allowed him to harm me. And so I want you guys to know right now that God is in full control of your life and whoever you think is out to harm you. God hasn't allowed them to harm you. The only way that someone can harm you is if God, God has allowed them to harm you. And if he has, it's strictly for a lesson. It's strictly to open your eyes so that you can see that they are not a good person and that they are not giving to you what you need in your life. And so, and if they aren't, like Laban is, leave. And so, he said, then Rachel and Leah replied, do we still have to share any of the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used of what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Now, as a wife, that's the perfect thing to tell your husband. Do whatever God is leading you to do. And as well, that is the like a great example of simply trusting your husband and trusting what God has told your husband. And obviously I am not married, but from a lot of the godly relationships that I have seen, most of the wives simply just trust their husband and move in the way that God has led him and the, the way that God has touched their hearts. And so now Rachel, she went straight through and she stole her father's household gold. Now, gods and i was just like what you need this for you know we just talked about god being provided god providing for y'all that whatever riches that y'all dad had is rightfully yours bada bada woo and so now you here talking about you want to steal anyway that's beside the point so laban pursues jacob and the third day laban was told that jacob had fled taking his relatives with him and he pursued jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill country of gilead then god came to laban the armenian army and Aramian in a dream at night and said to him be careful not to say anything to Jacob either good or bad now God already said yeah you coming up a little too close to my child be careful this is a warning be careful and so Laban said to Jacob when you got there what have you done you've deceived me and you've carried off my daughters like captives in war why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me so I could send you away with joy and singing in the music of timbrels and harps? Don't be out here lying, Laban. You know you wasn't going to do that nonsense. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. Sob story. Don't let these people guilt trip, y'all. You have done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you, but last night the, the God of your father said to me, be careful and to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. You don't have the power if God took it away. Now you have gone off because you long to return to your father's household, but why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. But if you find anyone who has your gods, that person shall not live in the presence of our relatives. See for yourself whether there is anything of yours here with me, and if so, take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the, good, the gods, and I'm just like, Rachel, what are you doing? And so he went searching through all through their camp, and so Rachel was on her period and she's like, don't be angry, my Lord, that I cannot stand up in your presence. I'm having my period. So he searched and could not find the household gods. The one time our period comes in handy, but we should not be stealing. And so Jacob was angry and took Laban to task. What is my crime? He had no crime. Well, he didn't know he had a crime, but he said, what is my crime? Jacob had no crime. He knew nothing of Rachel stealing. And so he was like, I've been with you for 20 years now. Your sheep, your goats have not miscarried. I've taken care of all your all your animals, all your flocks, all, and you have had prosperity in itself all the way around. And you demanded payment from me for whatever was stolen by day or by night. You were petty with me, your own son-in-law, and you expect me to be in your household for 20 years and not want to leave? You changed my wages 10 times. And he said, if the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the fair of Isaac had not been with me, you would surely have sent me away empty handed. But God has seen my hardship and the toil. He said, God has seen 
and like I like I, this consistent in Genesis God sees you God sees everything that you're going through and if you think if Jacob was in that for 20 years uh, experiencing maltreatment a negative treatment from his own family and God rescued him out of that and took him away from that and allowed him to f to flee and multiplied his blessings. He will do the same for you once you believe and have faith. Like in the previous podcast, I know the hardest thing in life is to have faith. We've seen Sarah lack faith. We've seen Rachel lack faith. We've seen Leah lack faith. We've seen everybody lack faith. We've seen Peter lack faith. And it's so hard to consistently have faith when things are going wrong and when the enemy is trying to separate you from God. But trust me, having faith or trying to have faith is better. And so, the man said, the women are my daughters, the children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks. My God, relax. All you see is mine, yet what can I do today about these granddaughters of mine or about the children they have born? Come now, let, let's make a covenant, you and I, let, let it serve as a witness between us. And so they made a covenant and, you know, the blind said to Jacob, here is the heap and here is the pillar I've set up between you and me. Um, may the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor and the God of the Father judge between us. And so Jacob took an oath in the name, name of the fear of his father Isaac. Now realize, Jacob did not take an oath in God's name. Not at all. He took it in the fear of his father Isaac. Because you're not supposed to be, you know, swearing and making promises on God's name. And so he offered a sacrifice there in the hill country and invited his relatives to a meal after they had eaten. They spent the night there. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. And then he left and returned home. Like he should like he should because you know i'm not interested in that nonsense and so jacob meets esau which i really didn't go into often because i was just like hmm. but he knew he was gonna have to pass you know jacob also went on his way and the angels of god met him when jacob saw them he said this is the camp of god so he named the place mahanim and Jacob sent messages ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. He instructed them, this is what you are to say to my lord Esau. Your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban and have remained there till now. I have cattle and donkeys and sheep and goats and male female servants. Now I am sending this message to my lord that I may find favor in your eyes. When the messengers returned to Jacob, they said, we went to your brother Esau and now he is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him. Ooh, Esau came with the army. Esau is not about the talking. He's not about the conversation. He's just like, yeah, you stole my blessing. You swindled me out of my birthright. There is no need for conversation, just hands. And so, like we all should, in time of trouble, Jacob prayed, oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown on your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. God multiplied, mul extremely multiplied. And so save me, I pray, from the, land of, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. He spent the night there and from what he had with him, he selected a gift for his brother Esau. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ooze and 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He put them in the care of his servants, each herd by itself and said to his servants, go ahead of me and keep some space between the herds. He instructed the one in the lead when my brother Esau meets you and asks, who do you belong to and where are you going? And who owns all these animals in front of you? Then you ought to say they belong to your servant Jacob. They are gifts sent to my lord Esau, and he is coming behind us. He also instructed the second and the third, you are to say the same thing to Esau when you meet him, and be sure to say your servant Jacob is coming behind us. I will pacify him with these gifts. I'm sending on ahead later. When I see him, perhaps he will receive me. He said, Yeah, let's 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 layer this up and let's send gift, pause, gift, pause, gift pause and so you know 
he himself spent the night and so Jacob's gifts went on ahead but he himself spent the night in the camp and then the night that Jacob got up and took his two wives his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the fort of Jabbok after he had sent them across the stream he sent over all his possessions and Jacob was left alone and when the man saw that he could not overpower him oop skip so Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak when the man saw that he could not overpower him he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled the man the man said let me go for it's daybreak but Jacob replied I will not let you go unless you bless me the man asked him what is your name Jacob he answered then the man said your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome Purr. Jacob said, please tell me your name. And he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites did not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. And so now, you know, Jacob already wrestled with God and lived. He was blessed. He was named Israel, God's chosen people. You know, it's all coming together. And so finally, Jacob meets Esau. I mean, I still can't get out of the, you know what it is to see God face to face and live? I feel like I would die from shock. Like just seeing him like, I just choke over and die. Um, <laughs> and then Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. Good Lord. Um... And he put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He said, Rachel and Joseph, most important. Most important. And he himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Bada bing, bada boom. You saw that? I, it, it, the blessing that Isaac put on Esau, he said, your yoke would want to come off of him. Like you don't, you don't want to carry the same weight as your brother any longer. And so he then said, came and bowed, hit Leah and her children came and bowed down and Joseph and Rachel, they too bowed down. And Esau said, what's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. So clearly, God has not forgotten Esau. Clearly. He said, I have enough. I don't need your extra. Keep the blessings that God has designed and designated to your, to you and your family to yourself. And Jacob said, no, please, please. Like, that's a guilty heart right there. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, please Except the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted. Love. Do you see the brotherly love? Despite, you know, him stealing, tricking, deceiving. They're, they both welcomed each other back into their hearts. And so Esau said, let us be on our, let us be on our way and I'll accompany you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender, that I must care for the ooze and cows that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard just one day, all the animals would die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servant, while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and herds before me, and the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord and Sarah. Esau said, Then let me leave some of my men with you. But why do that? Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in the eyes of my Lord. So that day Esau started on his way back to Sarah. Jacob, however, went to Sukkoth, where he built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock. After Jacob came from Padamaram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem in Canaan and camped within sight of the city for a hundred pieces of silver. He bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. There he set up an altar and called it El Elohe, Elohi Israel. But yeah, guys, this episode is all about love, sibling love, marital love, relationship love. 
And so without further ado, that is the end of this podcast. Guys, do not forget that we now have a prayer request option in the link below in the description box, as well as on the podcast box. Um, I hope you guys um, fill it out. If you need a prayer request, if you need anything, just put it out there and hopefully I can pray for you every week. And you know, we could have conversations about it if you'd like as well. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please let us know. We want guests on season two. Any child of God is welcome on the Child of God podcast. Just to learn your perspective on Christianity and you know what you think about it and how you feel God has blessed you and the testimonies that you have. I mean, I feel like it would just be a pleasure to learn more from you. And so without further ado, I'll see you guys later. Have a blessed week. Bye.